This is section 5.1. We're going to learn about the normal distribution. Okay, so there's lots of continuous distributions. This one is so common, it shows up all the time in nature and just all over the place that we get to spend an entire chapter on it. So we can find the normal distribution in things like heights of people, weights of people, tree diameters, scores on tests, repeated measurements of the same quantity, etc. There's just so many things that are normally attributed. Now, not everything has a normal distribution, but many, many do. Okay. And it's one of the most important things in all of our statistical procedures we're going to do. So one thing you should know is that it is a continuous distribution. Okay. And it's often called the Gaussian curve. So if you hear it called that or the bell curve, this is what they're referring to. Okay, so it's symmetric. It also kind of looks like a bell, hence bell curve. Okay, and there's two things that define it. Okay, you see this little mu in the sigma. Mu equals the mean or the average, and sigma is the standard deviation. And you'll see why we have it drawn like that down at the bottom. We'll figure that out. Okay, so our PDF, this isn't something you actually need to memorize, but the PDF is going to be 1 over the standard deviation times the square root of 2 pi all times e raised to the power of negative x minus the average squared divided by 2 times the standard deviation squared. And it's defined for all, all real numbers from negative infinity to infinity. The average is always that, again, your mean mu. The variance is sigma squared. Standard deviation is sigma. Okay, we'll use our, this notation. x is normally distributed with a mean mu and sigma squared. So we'll write the variance here in the second part. Some books write the standard deviation in the second part, so you just need to pay attention to what book you're using. And we'll say that x is normally distributed. So first, let's look at an applet for it. Okay, so my applet link didn't work, so I made a different applet. But on this applet, you can see this is the normal curve. We have a slider to change the average, and we have a slider to change the standard deviation. So I'll just drag my average and watch what happens to my curve. As my average gets higher, my curve moves to the right. As my average gets lower, my curve moves to the left. So the average just kind of moves your curve back and forth, left and right. So higher average means you go right. Okay, now let's see what happens if we change the standard deviation. So here's my standard deviation at 0.5. Notice as my standard deviation gets bigger, my curve gets fatter and fatter and spread out. If my standard deviation gets smaller, my curve gets skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. So bigger standard deviation just means it's more spread out. Okay, so let's go back and make some notes. So what does changing the mean do to the distribution? The average, or the mean, just kind of makes it go left to right. So it shifts the curve left to right. It just basically tells you where to center it. So a higher mean, or let's say higher average, makes the curve go to the right. Okay, what does changing the standard deviation do? Well, changing the standard deviation just means that, let's see, as the standard deviation increases, the curve gets fatter and more spread out. Okay, And finally it asks, where is the center or the middle of the normal curve? And we didn't say that specifically when we were looking at it. But look right now, my average is 0 and it looks like I'm centered at 0. If I move my average to 0 0.5, I'm centered at now 0 0.5. So you're always centered at the average. So where is the center? The center is at the average, or the mean. Okay. So that's why, if you look up at this image up here, they put the center at mu, and they drew kind of like two lines, and they said this distance in between is sigma. That kind of tells you, the standard deviation tells you how fat it is, and so you can kind of measure this width would be equal to our standard deviation. So here's a few pictures to remind you.
in this graph, both of these graphs have the same mean mu. So this tall graph, normal 5.25 means that it's normal, that the mean is 5, and that the standard deviation is, or the variance is, 0.25. So that's what this is telling you right here. Okay, and this one is normal down here with a mean of 5 and a variance of 4. So as you would expect, the one that has a variance of 4 is going to be much fatter because it's more spread out. Whereas over here, both curves have the same variance. Let's see, they both have a variance of 4, so same variance. But they have different averages, so they're just shifted over. Okay. So these both have the same variance, but different averages or means. The first one has the same mean, but different variances. So the next thing you want to know about the normal distribution is something called the empirical rule. So anytime you have any normal distribution with a mean mu and standard deviation sigma, we know that about 68% of all your observations will fall within one standard deviation of the mean mu. So here's your one standard deviation. You start at your mean mu and you go at one standard deviation in either direction. That will be about 68% of your curve. And if you go out two standard deviations in either direction, you'll be at 95%. And if you go out three standard deviations in either direction, so three this way, three this way, you'll get 99.7%. So how do we actually apply this? The distribution of the heights of young women is approximately normal with a mean mu equals 64.5. Now, as I read problems, I always write all this down. So normal, mu equals 64.5 and a standard deviation, sigma equals 2.5. What does the empirical rule say about this distribution? So you'd start and you'd say, okay, well I know I'm centered at 64.5, so in the center put your 64.5. And then I might want to know, what is my average plus or minus 1 times my standard deviation? So 1 times 2.5. This would be, let's see, 64.5 minus 2.5 is 62, and if we add 2.5, we get 67. So that means if I go one standard deviation, this way I'll be at 62. And if I go one standard deviation this way, I'll be at 67. Okay, so from 62 to 67, remember that's supposed to be 68% of all my data. And if I do 64.5 plus or minus 2 times 2.5, let's see, if I put that into my calculator, 64.5 minus 2 times 2.5, I'll get 59.5 to 69.5. If you're not sure how I got these numbers, stop, try it in your calculator, do 64.5 minus 2 times 2.5. Then stop, do it completely over, start from the beginning and do 64.5 plus 2 times 2.5. And remember, so, okay, that says if you go out two standard deviations now, we'll be at our 59.5 to 69.5. And we said within two standard deviations, that's supposed to be 95% of all of your data. And finally, do plus or minus 3. So that will put me at 57 to 72. So this would be 72 and 57. So that's coming out three standard deviations. And from here to here, maybe we'll come down to write it. That's supposed to be my 99.7% of all of my data. Okay. So now that we kind of have all of that worked out, let's kind of write out what this means to us. So this means that about 68% of all the heights are between 62 and 67 inches because my first range between one standard deviation is 62 to 67 and we just do the same thing over and over so 95% of all the heights 
are between 59.5 and 69.5 inches. And 99.7% of all the heights are between 57 and 72 inches. And that's what the empirical rule tells you. So if we ask, what does it tell you? You would write down something like this. And this rule applies the plus or minus one, two, and three semi applies for everything that happens to be normally distributed, which is why it's so cool. Okay, let's see. In our next example now, we have 10th graders in Indiana took the English exam. The mean score is 572. So that means sigma equals 572. Sorry, not sigma. It said mean. So I meant to say mu. The standard deviation is 51. So sigma equals 51. Pay attention to whether they say standard deviation or variance. You write down the right one. The scores were approximately normal. So now we know it's normal and we can use our normal stuff. So what range of scores includes the middle 95% of the scores? So when it says that, it's saying like, okay, up here we said, okay, there's 95% between these two numbers. So what two numbers? Well, Anytime you have a normal curve, the middle 95% is between, and let's go back up and look at our first picture. The 95% is always between the negative 2 and 2 standard deviations. So it's always going to be between our mean plus or minus 2 times the standard deviation. So in our case, our mean is 572 plus or minus 2 times our standard deviation of 51. So this gives me 470 to 674. So that means that about 95% of the middle students will be between 470 and 674. Now, as part of what you need to do next for this class, we're going to pause right here. We're going to use an applet. So on your homework, there's this little activity you need to do that's called the normal distribution applet. Okay. And there's this nice little website you need to go to. And we're going to play around with some things to learn about the standard normal distribution. So this is all on your worksheet as well, but the standard normal distribution is one that is so common, we get a specific name. The standard normal distribution always has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And we use this one to find probabilities. So when you come to this applet, notice this blue arrow, I'm not sure why they put it there, it disappears. But you have this red line that you can drag back and forth. And you have this what's called the z-value. The z is what goes here on the x-axis, and it's called z. And as you drag this back and forth, you're changing the z-value notes down below. Okay, then the red probability, don't matter where it's more, so it says it's 1 minus p, but the red probability is now the probability to the left. And it tells you this is 0.761. And as I drag this, not only does z change, but the probability to the left in the red changes. Now you can also see to the right is blue, and they have a blue probability. So I can ask you to find probability to the left or probability to the right, and you can do that just by dragging this. If you click two tails, then it divides it well into two tails. And you should be able to drag either line, but if not, go for the right line. And you'll see it's either the red probability is what's in the middle, or the blue probability is what's in both tails combined. Now you can just type in the Z box and put in a two, and the probability should change, so 2 and push enter. And it will move your lines to z equals 2 and negative 2 and tell you the probability. Theoretically, you're supposed to be able to also put in a probability. Like, let's say we want to know 0.05, enter. And it should move your lines to where you have 0.05 probability in the blue part. It doesn't actually let you put it in the red, so you'd have to use the complement rule. So, like, if I want... 90% in the middle, I put 10% on the end. Oh, the decimal. Push enter, and it will move it. So now I have 0.9 in the middle, and it will tell you what my z value is. So that's pretty cool. Occasionally, though, I did notice that it wasn't working. So if I put in like 0.07, sometimes it changes the z, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure why it doesn't. If you put in values, and it just doesn't work, it just gives you a z of zero and it's not changing. See, it, it's just not working here. So if that happens, just ignore that 
and you can just move the line until you get to the specific probability that you needed for the word 